All right, ladies and gentlemen, and children of all ages, welcome to Monday's episode of Student of the Gun Radio. Yes, we're on, uh, we're in the thousands now, 1,002. If you're a recent or new listener, welcome. Thank you very much for uh, uh, taking the time out of your day to be with us. And also, congratulations on your excellent decision-making skills. So today, uh, we are going to talk to Pete Brownell. Pete Brownell is a third generation uh, of the Brownells family. He's the grandson of the original founder of Brownells. And uh, we're going to talk about the state of the industry. We're going to talk about where we've been, where we are, where we potentially will be in the future. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, the cancellation of SHOT Show and what that actually means or could potentially mean uh, to the uh, country and or, well, basically the industry, to the shooting sports industry and people who are involved in it. And, uh, well, what, what the, the future may or may not hold. And we're going to do that, uh, well, after we play the intro video. Stand by for education, enlightenment, enjoyment, and entertainment. He's not here to talk about your feelings. He's not here to say what you want to hear. He's here to say what needs to be said. Ladies and gentlemen and children of all ages, please welcome your host, the Pimp Hand of America, Professor Paul Markle. Okay, well, before we uh, before we hit play on my interview with Pete, uh, I'm going to tell you that that this is going to be a super uh, Brownells. Well, it's not going to be a Brownells bullet points because that's on Wednesday. So this is going to be, I don't know, a Brownells extra. But uh, they, they've been with us for a long, long time. Check out those guys. Sign up on their for their newsletter. All that good stuff. Uh, we also want to thank our good buddies. At uh, Crossbreed Holsters, they help you to be dangerous on demand. How? By giving you the most comfortable inside the waistband holster you ever got. And, uh, well, if you use the promo code SOTG18, you're, you're going to get a good holster and you're going to save some money. So, hey, what else could you possibly want? Duracoat, because life is too short to have an ugly gun. I, I, I tried to say it, but I hit the wrong slider. <laughs> <laughs> All right. In unison. Life is too short to have an ugly gun. Yes, indeed. Yep. You don't want to have an ugly gun. I don't want to have an ugly gun. If you bought a gun from wherever, uh, well, go to DuracoatFirearmFinishes.com. And that might be something you want to do this winter. You, you got your, your, your great uncle's old Winchester Wingmaster or Remington Wingmaster or whatever, uh, and most of the bluing is gone on it or half the bluing has gone. You're like, yeah, man, I'd really like to, you know, Snaz that thing up a little bit. Well, go to Brownells, man. They can help you out. And, and, you, and if you have questions, ask them. They'll be happy to answer your questions. They're good people up there. Uh, oh, don't forget about the uh, – what am I supposed to remind them? It says remind people to do something. Oh, it's just the Student of the Gun Public group. Go join that group. We've got a group on Facebook if you're a Facebook user. We've also got a group in the student lounge if you are not a Facebook user. So there are links that are directly in the show notes. Open up the show notes, and then you can choose to either go to the Facebook group or the group in the student lounge. Okay. Yes, do that. Do that. Do that then, or where? In addition to Crossbreed Holsters helping you be dangerous on demand, we are also helping you be dangerous on demand by doing a Fundamental 4 giveaway. Now, the Fundamental 4 are lethal, sharp, bright, and medical. And what does that mean? What does that mean to have a Fundamental 4 giveaway? It means we're giving something away that has the Fundamental 4. So we're going to, if you want to sign up to, to the uh, Fundamental 4 giveaway, we're doing that to all of the active members of the student of the gun newsletter. It's totally free to go join. You just go to student of the gun.com. It's right there on the homepage. And in addition to the entering into the giveaway, you're going to get the seven training tips that can save your life online training course. Yep. yep. So we're so doing the fundamental four in the giveaway. We're doing a knife, a light, a pocket lifesaver and a shoulder bag. Oh, so it's even coming with like the go bag type deal Yeah, exactly. that we talk about a lot. Oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah. The only thing that you have to supply is the lethal part. Yeah, well, a Which knife is lethal. Have. It's also sharp. We can't well, send. Yeah. We're not going to send you a gun. Exactly. We're not going. We're yeah. not going to mail you a gun. I'm sorry. That's not going to. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and so if you're listening to this the day that it comes out, which is Monday, 
Uh, tomorrow is 11 10 20, which means it's the Marine Corps birthday, and that will be the day that Zach picks the winner from the active email addresses. So, oh, better go do it. Yeah, and active know. means that you interact with the thing. So, when you go sign up to if you're new to the list and you go sign up for the seven training tips that can save your life course on studentofthegun.com. First thing you need to do is open the confirmation email and click the link that shows the system that you've taken action and that you're actually an active subscriber. That you're not a robot. That way we, we know you're not a spam bot just trying to sign up for stuff. And that yeah. also means that you, if you sign up today, you will still be eligible. Yeah, that's right. All right. Okay, uh, now the next words that you hear are going to be mine and my good friend Pre Pete Brownell. So listen up, freaks. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are privileged to have on the phone with us as a special guest, Mr. Pete Brownell. Yes, that Brownell, the ones in Iowa, the dynasty. You are a dynasty, <laughs> are you not, Pete? <laughs> I feel like a dinosaur sometimes. So, yeah. <laughs> Yes. Uh, you know, you guys are so big now, uh, and you've got so many products and such a, you know, a huge inventory. I think a lot of people might not quite understand that you, the Brownells company and the Brownells family, you're an American success story. Uh, your grandpa, did he start in his basement? Was it, was that his basement or his workshop? Well, it was close. Um, he started 1939, the, the, the month after his second child was born, what happened to be my dad. He had Frank Brownell, and he started it in the, it was such a small house. Uh, my dad kind of slept in a, uh, a drawer. They pull a drawer out and put the kids in the drawer and they're that small. And that's where his business started, was on the same dresser that my dad uh, used as a crib slash um, drawer for his uh, baby clothes. <laughs> so it's gone from really a one, oh, not necessarily one room, but two room house to what we've got going on today. So, and you've actually grown so much that you, you outgrew Montezuma and, and now you're in we Grinnell. We did. Yeah. So still an Iowa based company. We've, uh, we had a started all very small town, about 1200 some people there in Montezuma for those that have been in Iowa, it's pretty flat, so it's just another ag, uh, agricultural town, and that was our main revenue generation for that town for, uh, geez, generations, and that's when my uh, my grandpa started his business. Actually, they were a grocery store. Him and his father, my great-grandfather, were in the grocery store business for a while, and they sold guns back then, back in the early, early uh, 1900s, well over gosh, do well over a hundred years now, 115 years ago. So, um, we're in the gun business for generations and we, we got to the point where the warehouse and the space we had there, a little too small. We kept it because we bought a company and put it in there, bought Crow Shooting Supply, which is a wholesaler. Then we moved everything else up to the interstate on Interstate 80. So quite a big move, 20 miles. Yeah, and when that and for those of you guys out there uh, who do truck, you know, back and forth east and west on Interstate 80, uh, you need to well, you need to adjust your schedule so that you arrive in Grinnell in the daytime. And if a lot That's of right. you guys out there are truckers, a lot of you guys have big rigs, and I can testify to the fact that they have a huge, enormous parking lot, and that. People driving big rigs actually do pull into the Brownells lot and get out and go in and shop. They do. Yeah. I'm laughing because uh, my dad and I had an argument about how many how many tractor trailers we're going to bring in and how many uh, campers driving along. And he comes from an era that when you went on vacation, you hooked up the trailer, and we would travel across the United States. So we put in uh, seven, eight in our parking lot. Um, spots for semis with big turning radius and all the good things. Mm -hmm. So, um, that was the compromise. If you wanted 15, well, holy smokes, that's a lot. <laughs> and, uh, he, I think he was right. <laughs> so stop by right there in Grinnell, Iowa. Stop by. That's stop right. By to, 
And you guys are on the on the, the north side of the highway. You can't miss it. If you miss it, turn around and come right. back. That's right. Turn around right. and come back. Cool. You know, the one thing that I really enjoyed while I was up there the last time, it was a couple summers ago, uh, was, was the gun shop inside. And you guys take in right. so many used guns, trade-in we guns. I was, I was amazed. We and do. a lot of stuff that you don't see. You know what I mean? Like, right. yeah, it, rare right. things. And, and I think if Roy yeah. and Ryan and, and Paul don't get to them first, then <laughs> <laughs> then you can get them. Yeah, it's a bit of a candy store. It's pretty cool stuff. We, you know, we're really lucky from Rock Island. Uh, we got Rock Island Arsenal and the Hogan's over there. Uh, we get a chance to see some awesome, awesome firearms from, from their location. It's some rare things. We're not that kind of rarefied air. So if anybody's out there, here's a plug for Rock Island Arts um, um, Auction. They do a fantastic job of just the things that you just drool over. We kind of had a couple levels down from that um, on some of the current production guns and um, a lot of the, uh, the stuff that Grandpa had that's coming through the system, and we're just helping mm-hmm. resell those. We'll buy, we'll buy some stuff that kind of every once in a while be great. We've... Uh, We've got a little bit of a, kind of a secret project we're working on, so it's not so secret as soon as I tell you. And everybody else is listening. We're looking at putting some museum-like pieces from collections that we have access to down in that retail place. So nice. people get an actual chance to maybe take a look and on some special occasions get out and see how they work and um, get a chance to see what a, a real fine firearm looks like. So we can kind of let everybody know what a purdy looks like. How's it feel? How's it feel? They even go out and shoot it a couple times with everybody. So we got a special one. We got a special one. That'll keep that one secret for a bit, but it's something everybody, all you got to say is two, three words, and everybody would know exactly what, what rifle it is. So. <laughs> and also, I want to yeah, make sure everybody cool. knows that even though the you, know, you guys, you got, what, 850,000 SKUs or something crazy like that, <laughs> you can't put them all out on the floor. But no. if you if you need something, go in, you sit down, type it in, bring it up in the catalog right in front of you on a computer monitor and, and order it. And someone will go pick and pull it from the back and it'll come in on this cool conveyor belt. And it, I, at least that's still there, right? <laughs> in a yeah, tub, still there. And, and, and your name will flash and it'll say, P. Markle, order is ready for pickup. And, uh, so, uh, if there's anything in the catalog, it's in stock and it's in the, you know, if it's in the building, don't come in and say, I want a case of a hundred or a thousand nine millimeter bullets. Cause that ain't happening, but, <laughs> but that's not happening right now. That's not happening, but you know, pieces, parts, uh, you know, all that good stuff. They'll, so they'll send somebody in the back in that massive warehouse, pull it for you and send it up front. So don't, don't worry about it. So I've got to ask you, you've been in the business for a while. When did you take over? You know, I know your dad's kind of been, you know, he, he kind of semi-retired and then he, you know, he's keep, he's always kind of keeps his hand in the game. But when did you like grab the reins? Was it during the Obama administration? It was, it would have been, um, actually, but right at the beginning of it, frankly. So it was, uh, it was, a, I can claim a lot of fame, but really it was taking advantage of the tailwind that, that administration gave us. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it was, um, gosh, when would that have been? Maybe right around 2008. So when it was the CEO. So I've been doing this for a bit, and I'd really I've, I've kind of handed it off to the next generation of uh, not Brownells, but professional leaders here. So a guy named Chad Martin is now the CEO. I'm sitting on a uh, on a, on the board and helping run. One of the newer companies that we've got, which is AR15.com. So, mm-hmm. me, so it's that uh, that blog and media site over there. So, helping lend my skills there, and we got a great team that really running the the commerce side of the business, which is Brownells and Crow and Camille, uh, LM Baumler. Well, we've uh, we've acquired seven some companies underneath the commerce division for some time, and and just recently had uh, nominate, brought Chad into uh, the CEO role and, and uh, done great jobs. I mean, we'll, we'll kind of get to it, I'm sure, but this market is 
uh, exponentially larger than the Obama market or spikes that we were seeing back during his uh, administration. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask you. I was going to say, how, how does the current situation compare? You know, Obama, wow. we kind of had two spikes. We had one, and then it dropped off, then we had another one. So, I mean, how does right now compare to when you were running it during the Obama panic? Um, you know, during Obama, we had, uh, they were kind of an event, a single event driven. And uh, Nick, Nick would come up, which is a good indicator. Everybody's kind of aware of, I would say, adjusted Nick that comes out of NSSF uh, review of, of the Nick's checks. You know, during Obama, we would have, it was mostly long guns that were, which is ARs, were driving that. And our largest fight during his uh, era was somewhere like uh, right around Christmas, the Black Friday type of uh, promotions. They were, you know, the largest one by far was like 1.2 million um, mixed checks for ARs. Mm -hmm. Today, we're not even close for ARs. You know, the largest spike we've got so far is like um, 719,000. That was back in March. But handguns. Uh, 1.4 million happened this March, and it's been and it's the same. So, and that's just that's just handguns. If you put that AR, that long gun and handgun together, we were uh, we were two million two million strong. You know, we're eh, kind of close to the handguns and rifles back in the Obama biggest spike, but nowhere close to what's going on now, and it's been sustaining since March. So it's it's exponential, and and we're just I can say from our business. We are, we could have a 300% demand, but there's not enough product in the pipeline to supply that. Oh, I know. So the, I mean, you were just kind of joking about a pallet of nine millimeter that will sell and it'll be a million rounds in about two hours. Cause it's the backlog is so big. The demand is so big on certain calibers. Mm -hmm. It'll be huge. That's crazy. And, uh, and that's every time it's that's the last couple of months, not just last three or four weeks. But, yeah. but there's, 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 that's the tailwinds right now. But man, we've been around for 80 plus years, 85 years. We know these things come in cycles. Mm -hmm. And there is, for every up, there's an equal down. Mm -hmm. The longer, the longer and taller the up. So traditionally, when there's been just one mitigating factor that drives demand, We'll have an equal and just as long down. We've got some weird things going on right now that's driving demand, and and um, some things that that uh, when we come down to safety, it's driving a lot of people across the threshold of gun stores across America that, that have never considered owning a firearm that are concerned about safety, and we don't see those types of motivators. Um, going away anytime soon, regardless of what happens uh, today or whenever this thing gets settled. Or tomorrow or the next day or whenever. Yeah, yeah. tomorrow or the next six weeks. Yeah. Right, so this this up is unbelievable, like 300% up from on a good, on a pretty decent year. And that's sustainable over months where it used to be like three weeks and it would tail off. Right. Yeah, so I've had conversations. We, yeah. I've had conversations with people in the industry. And, you know, we used to – it used to, I talk like an old guy now, like, well, back in the old days, we could predict, you know, because right. you, you had your, right. you had your, your post Thanksgiving, you had your Christmas, you know, people bought guns for gifts for Christmas. And then you, you of course you had your hunting season where you could predict certain things were going to sell and certain things were going to move. Then you moved into summer where most people were fishing, but they would shoot their 22s. And then you had, you know, kind of a, a predictable cycle. And ever since right. Obama, I think they it's kind of just destroyed that cycle where we had these huge right. highs and then these these you know back breaking crushing lows where we were talking one year ago about how you know companies are going out of business they're they're folding up shop right. you know, the distributors are going out of business and uh and the the big thing from Obama that I hope a lot of people learned was how they got burned. A lot of these manufacturers, 
You know, they, they ramped up too little too late. And by the time they were, you know, producing AR lowers, the bubble burst, they're stuck with a million dollar mortgage and boom, they're gone. They're out of business. Right. 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 And that's a challenge. So we, for you. The industry, yeah, it is. So the inventory management is a challenge. So right now with this tailwind, uh, so, so some good things, all the inventory sins of the past are gone. Mm-hmm. They've all been sold out. So we now, and this, most of the industry, all that excess inventory that would have burdened us during those lean years, the, the, they call it the Trump swamp. Mm-hmm. That was that was a burden for much of the industry. Much of the industry uh, bets that uh, four years ago, they were making bets literally four years ago, and they bet the industry bet wrong. Mm-hmm. And we all remember that. So we during this, tailwind that we've received since March, very few people are investing as deeply as they had in inventory or capacity. And it's easy right now to have these tailwinds to throw out a PO and it'll sell when you come in. But everybody's waiting. When is this going to slow down? When is this going to uh, try to get their crystal ball all clear? When is this going to go back to normal? Or when is that uh, dip going to happen? So no one's really adding in capacity. Yeah, and, and I see... Because here's what happens. Go ahead. Go ahead. Well, so the factory doubles the capacity. We'd order we'd order it all, and then we'd cancel it too quickly on them as an industry. And that just leaves the factories holding the bag, which is not, not good. So there's... We've taken a really recent approach as a whole industry, and I know it's frustrating as a, as a end user because I also run out of... Believe it or not, I can't get my hands on 9 millimeters. <laughs> because I want my customers to have it. So I know the frustration, but I can also appreciate what um, what an inventory hangover feels like for the industry. Oh, and yeah. And we, we don't want to leave it. Yeah, we don't want to leave our factories hanging. Or, it's a tough balance. Well, and that was some. There so, were some hard learning years during during that Obama thing, uh, and yeah. you know a lot. And like you said, there's a lot of frustration. And unfortunately, we've all we also have these. Uh, all of these new gun buyers, all these Johnny Come Lately first timers, whatever you want to call it, they just show up and they're like, "Hey, man, I've got money. Give me one of those." And the you know their gun shops like, uh, "Yeah, that's not how it works, man." Like, well, what do you mean? Like, uh, right. well, I don't know where you've been, but this is the really real world that we're working in, and and, uh, right. and there's like this frustration level. And then you've got shops that are they've got customers, and the customers are frustrated, and, and you know that. It's it's not a good situation. It's it's a better situation for manufacturer, well, and wholesalers, distributors, and everything to have that normal. You know, the, the, I guess we could go in back and say the the eighties or nineties normal, where you kind of just knew, you know, which season it was, and you could prep for that season, and right. then you expected a summer slump, and but it was no big deal because you you knew it was coming. But then Christmas was coming, so you're good. Now it's like this 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 roller coaster that's just and a lot of people have gotten run over by it. Speaking of people getting run right. over, uh, I know I did. I saw the press release about the Remington breakup, and I didn't see that that Brownells had acquired anything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, we didn't. Uh, we well, a lot of people in the industry were interested, and some of us stepped in. To, um, you know, advice was what it was worth since it was free. It, it, they got their deal. They got a great deal. <laughs> uh, but a lot of people stepped up, and um, we were interested to, to, to get some great brands in there. Not just the Remington brand, which mm-hmm. is great, but I mean, you had, you had Dakota in there, you had uh, uh, Marlin, you had some great brands in there, and um, they had some life to them. We wanted to make sure that that uh, they stay healthy. They need to, they need to improve, and they, I think they landed in in a lot of good places which was interesting and um, we want to, we want them as an industry. We need a, we need a Remington. We need a Remington uh, yeah, it was, it was my, interesting. So much, what am I saying? Yeah. Just to yep. see how many different people came to the plate to, uh, yeah. to, to pick up that. But what, but the crazy thing is, is uh, right now is not the time for new products. And that leads me into my next question for yeah. you. Will the shot show being canceled affect the industry negatively? You know, we were talking about that. We, 
uh, before the cancellation notice came out just earlier this week, or what was it, what was today? Earlier last week, um, it was, man, we really don't want to send our team there. Uh, we don't know what's going on. Our customer's going to show up because of COVID and, and the restrictions around travel in Vegas and all that. So we knew it was going to be a lightly travel. Everybody comes back with the Las Vegas or SHOT Show crud. Mm-hmm. This happens this year because it has some some serious consequences. For example, if the way our policies work around here in most factories, if somebody comes back infected, or they infect your crew, you shut down for a, a, peri- a, a cell, a lot of people go home, and then and you're out of production. No, you're not bringing in new people mm-hmm. on top of this. That could cause some other problems. So we're hoping that they, that they would uh, do what they've ultimately did, which was cancel it. Demand, you don't need to go to shot show to write orders right now. Right. Um, what you're going to miss out of this, is maybe it's the, it's the connecting with your, with your community, your, your industry. Those are some real, this is a, Maybe every industry is like this. Because I've only been in construction in this one. This one's really relationship driven, and those are the things that are going to be missed. We're we're not uh, going to be able to go to uh, to a dinner. Um, those those really those brainstorming things that happen over a beer or a walk or just kind of walking the the show and just talking to each other is that's not going to happen. You can do it on Zoom, but it's not going to be as, as intense or productive, I don't think. No. And that's the, that's the seed of, uh, of creativity, I think. Um, and, and the partnerships, long-term partnerships, those things are going to be the ones that we miss, which will be found, we'll be finding our, ourselves a gap in new product partnerships or OEM relationships. We'll be seeing that gap uh, probably next year. Mm-hmm. Uh, but probably 2022 shot show if we have it I think we will I hope but yeah. if we um, if we get to it we may see a, a, a gap in new products for more reasons than just we don't have time to work on them we haven't had the strength and relationships to quickly bring them to market yeah I think a lot well, that's, I, that's a downfall yeah from the people that I've talked to I just talked to Charlie Brown with MKS Supply here and, and I said mm-hmm. I said, how's the innovation? And, and he laughed. He said, oh, he said, everybody, you know, coming out of shot 2020, they had these ideas and for the new products and so forth. A lot of them were going to launch and release at NRA. And then this hit and they're like, well, there's no point right. in us investing a half a million dollars in a brand new product when we can't even deliver the old products. So a lot of the innovation and stuff is, it's just taking a back seat. Uh, but yeah, yeah, yeah we. Yeah, it, the, for me, I don't know. Like, the shots, well, it's become that necessary evil. You know, it's <laughs> it, it really has. I used to love it when it was an old Las Vegas convention center. You know, because that's oh, that's yeah. kind of where I started. That is where I started the old Las Vegas convention center, and I got real comfortable with it. And I knew how to negotiate the floor, and I knew everything. And then we lost that. And then we did a couple of years in Orlando. It was kind of upside down. And, and now we are yep. where we are. And it's like you said, you don't need to go to, to shot to write orders anymore. Yeah, that used to be the thing. You know, years and years ago, that right. was guys were writing orders, shops and wholesalers. And all these guys are coming in, they're writing orders, and they're having meetings. Now they're not. I talked to someone a couple of years ago, and they're like, dude, we don't even write orders anymore. You know, it, right. it just doesn't happen. So it, it's, right. we, we, you know. And it's not the, I mean, it's not the end of the world shot, not being, and quite frankly, I think if they were going to try and enforce minimum, you know, they were going to do maximum capacity where they had people clicking at the door, you know, one in one out, that kind of thing. And people wearing masks and it wouldn't work that you just, you can't do that. It's, you know, you can't do a trade show like that. Especially when you need that interpersonal activity. That's the whole reason I go is for interpersonal activity, you know? No. Right. That's right. So uh, yeah. you, you get a good sense of the buzz of the industry. How's it going? Um, right now, everybody knows we're, we are all working, uh, all working the floor. <laughs> you know, I can yeah. see Jason Hornady or, or Steve even, uh, they're out there packing boxes. Everybody's, everybody's head down and trying to work as fast as they can without putting 
anybody in their in their factories at danger and trying to serve the customer and everybody's everybody's putting their head down and working pretty darn hard. Well, I just got some so some six a, millimeter Creedmoor from Hornady, and I want to think that Steve boxed that up for me. I I want to think that. <laughs> <laughs> he might have. He was working pretty hard. So was Jason. So. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> yeah. So I want to think. Heck, I want to think that Pete Brownell put assembled my box from Brownells that just that showed up to me. <laughs> you put the, the packing, the, the little, the, the pillows, you put the packing pillows in there and, and yeah, made, made, well. <laughs> made sure it happened. Oh man. I'll tell you one, I'll tell you one thing, I joke a little bit about it, but getting out there on the, on the floor and seeing what customers are buying and where's their interest. You can, you can tell looking at a spreadsheet, but when you start to lift really a thousand pounds of ammo in a day in a shift mm-hmm. or a certain kind of ammo, you, I mean, it, pretty impressive what uh, not just our team but any team who's doing delivery to the customer is is accomplishing right now it's i think the whole industry is um frankly got a lifesaver from um the trump uh dip that that's happened and i think everybody is that everybody's kind of stepped up they're trying to serve the customer very well across the industry so we got to Try to plot them as much as they have. I know it's frustrating not to have it. My God, but oh, I know. But, but brother, in. it's it's not like you know. I, I guess the new people. So the the new people that that you know, I never thought I would own a gun until this year. Now I own one, uh, and I want a million rounds. And how come I can't buy them? But the people who've been around for a long time, they really don't have an excuse. Now they might have a reason, <laughs> but they don't have an excuse. I know we, I, I come to this black microphone here and I've been doing for years saying, look, especially last year, I, I said, Hey, yep. ammunition, ammunition was almost like pre Clinton era prices. I said, it, go to your lockers, open them up right. and look and see what you've got. And if you don't have what you think you should have, go buy it. And, and I was telling, I was right. telling people last February, I said, this is before we even knew COVID was going to be a thing. You know, I said, it's not going to get more readily available and cheaper as the uh, election per- comes gets closer. And I was just thinking election. I wasn't thinking riots and looting and COVID and election. You know, I was just right. thinking election. And, and we should all know that. And people, I have a hard time, you know, feeling pity for somebody that says, oh, man, I wish I had. And I was like, oh, man, they were giving those things away last year. <laughs> Heck. I, yep. just, I just saw a Mossberg, some company, uh, one of these online ones, says they, in stock, Mossberg Shockwave 12-gauge, seven ninety nine. <laughs> a year ago, they were on sale for two ninety nine. <laughs> I know. We were, all those years, all those years that uh, people were, in, quote, investing in uh, lowers and uh, mm-hmm. cheaper ARs for this these inevitable days that they had planned when... Um, they were going to be banned. Mm-hmm. Now it's time to cash in. Get oh, those yeah. things on the marketplace right now. Cash oh, yeah. them in. Uh, yeah, get to get them. Uh, get them out there in circulation again. So uh, one of the yeah, main reasons. Uh, no, one of the main reasons I want to talk to you, Pete, is because you got you're in a unique position at Brownells. You're not just tuned into guns. You're tuned into everything: guns, accessories, ammunition, pieces, parts, optics, all of that. Uh, mm-hmm. So my question to you is: So looking at all these different industries that all come into the Big Brownells plant, what do you see for the future uh, of the of the industry? Uh, I'll give you two potential futures, and it comes down to, um, well, frankly, today, what's going to happen come uh, come this, this evening, and then when we finally figure this out, if we have a uh, a Trump administration, we still have what I would consider to be uh, civil unrest for some time. There'll be some um, continued uh, problems in the cities, and that's going to drive security issues. So that is a that's a market that's going to be driven by the concealed carry pistol. We'll start. We'll continue to see maybe not three hundred percent up, but we'll continue to see. Uh, a lot of transactions in your personal protection pistol. That's going to be your nine. The people that have already purchased them today, 
that these four to five million new gun owners above the regular um, market that's traditionally sold to, those are urban individuals. So I can see that with the handgun uh, being purchased in the urban areas for security reasons, there'll be a very large portion of those individuals demanding more places to go shoot, which means we all get more indoor ranges Mm -hmm. in centers of population. You mentioned something a little bit earlier where people would show up and say, all right, give me the, uh, give me the gun, give me the ammo, give me the holster, let's go chop, chop. And they get stopped with the cacophony of, of regulations that we all go through. It's brand new. And I've even heard, heard someone say, well, just give me the, the gun show loophole. Let's get this thing done. And you yeah. go. <laughs> and, and they re- there's a big realization that it's not, um, it's not that easy that there is a lot of, uh, checks and balances and safety mechanisms in place to make sure we're all, uh, following the law and doing things on the right way. So those individuals get a, a better appreciation of just what kind of law abiding gun owners are all about because now they are one as well. Mm-hmm. And you're going to see, um, what we, what we think is that core firearm is purchased. There'll be more ammunition being sold. There'll be more places to go shoot. There'll be more, uh, there'll be a secondary firearm being purchased. Traditionally, it's going to be a shotgun. So not necessarily leaning into the AR-15 under that scenario of the Trump um, administration. The Biden administration, this is kind of a caveat. And the assumption is where at least the, the, Republicans have at least a one vote majority in the Senate with a Biden administration. And what that sets up is, frankly, the last time he was in office, where there's uh, administrative leadership talking about um, firearm restrictions, uh, but yet getting some laws through the system are going to be not as streamlined as a uh, trifecta of Mm. Democrats coming in and going to House, the Senate, and the administrative offices. So with that, it's going to be a lot of AR-15s again. We're going to start to see um, concealed carry pistols taper off, and it'll be a, an AR-15 market. Um, one of the caveats and all this is that the NRA is not as strong as it used to be um, and needs to regenerate some strength. Still a very large organization, but it's not out in front like it had been in the past during the first Trump um, presidents to run. NRA was front and center. There's a lot of good groups that have stepped up, but it's very difficult to fill a five million man, five million plus member organization. Mm-hmm. And and um, it people and they really influence about 35 million, which is a third of all gun owners that could uh, people eligible that could be firearm owners. They influence that many, so that force isn't there necessarily, and that kind of throws all future predictions out because. Uh, I don't. I don't know what. I don't know what a gun protection environment looks like. A pro gun environment looks like, regardless of the political makeup, without the NRA. Mm-hmm. And I can tell you, it's not going to be as strong. No. Well, I think there's some great companies out there. There, there. The NRA has an opportunity right now to demonstrate to the American people that they're serious uh, about what they say they're serious about, and to not compromise. And I think that right. the thing that's been that's hampered them is they 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 got you know and I know you used to be affiliated with them uh, as a board member, yep. but they got tripped. I believe they've got spent too much time in and around D.C. and they start playing the 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 power sharing game, and like well mm-hmm. you, if we if we give on this one then you pack up on that one and so on and so forth, but the perception out in America is that. If it when it gets really super tough, they can be counted on to fold, and you know they really. If I mean the American like um, the traditional American gun buyer holds a grudge like no other human on planet Earth, and I mean there are people today that won't buy a Smith and Wesson because of the Clinton debacle. <laughs> uh, yeah, right. That was right two or three owners ago. Yeah, a very yeah. principled. It's a very principled uh, and discerning customer out there, and and we all have to uh, realize and respect that. And um, 
be able to service that stuff. So that customer plus everybody else has kind of come in to the marketplace because the the demographic that's growing the fastest right now is still in percentages, not necessarily over or surpassing our urban uh, black community members. That's a demographic that has really been underserved for a very, very, very long time. Probably since we started owning firearms in, in North America, which is forever. So that group is really starting to understand where their, uh, what that second amendment means for them mm-hmm. and welcome them with open arms and join them with open arms too. So there's great groups out there that are starting to, uh, represent, uh, segments of, of, Americans out there that want to enjoy their second amendment and what it provides them the sense of uh, freedom and independence and safety. Most definitely uh, the NRA had, a, had trouble wrapping their arms around that as gracefully as some organizations that have come up like NAGA, which is the national African American gun owners association. That group is really uh, skyrocketing and you can, uh, Philip Smith is the, the, the head person there and he is a, a wonderful representative of what, what's needed, not just in the black community, the African-American community, but in all communities that uh, have been underrepresented. So it's a great model. Um, the NRA is there to support, but just can't be in front right now, um, taking some blows, um, which starts to generate a lot of interest groups that have risen up and done some great things. But, you know, all the circle back to SHOT Show, to ramble a little bit, SHOT Show was the main revenue generator for NSSF. Mm-hmm. And it's just that has stepped up quite a bit uh, on get out the vote, um, some industry specific policies politically that are starting to uh, make their way and be challenged again. And they're stepping in the breach there and starting to uh, defend. The NRA still got a very strong political uh, reach, just not as public as it used to be. And so they're, these groups are stepping in, and without a shot show, that revenue that, that's been used to help defend our rights as and our industry's rights is is somewhat diminished even in these with these great tailwinds we're having as an industry mm-hmm. so the, the groups are stepping up we just i'd like to see inner be more of that uh, that fighting brand that they had been the last 30 plus years and, and i know it's going to take a little bit of change to get there but it's um i think it's well needed and it's hard to it's hard to not recognize and respect what they've been able to do the last thirty plus years. Plus, everybody else is out there yeah. who's been fighting for gosh, our rights and in, in the ways that they do real well. Well, something that that so, we've been been hammering on here for well quite a long time, but especially this year, is leadership. And, and I really believe in my heart of hearts that the American people out, are out there, and they've seen so much political correctness and so so many caveats from this this group they're like well let's see how we can couch our words to appease the most people and and so forth and i i really believe that right now there are millions of americans that are just sitting there saying look I'm tired of political correctness. I'm tired of game playing. I'm tired of of this power sharing and this and this this insider politics stuff. We need leadership, and I truly believe this country is starving for leadership yeah. at all levels. And uh, you know, at the cul-de-sac level, at the community level, and right. and, right. and and as an industry, what frustrates me the most, I believe, and, and you can tell me if I'm wrong on this one, Pete, but. During the Obama administration, we did, and and basically since the crime bill expired in 2004, we've done a great job, or we did a great job, convincing Americans to buy stuff, right? I mean, we did. We we did a great job convincing Americans to buy AR-15s, the number one rifle in America. But what we, I believe as an industry, what we failed to do is we failed to lead and from a, an educational standpoint and say, I'm glad that you bought that. That's awesome. Uh, 
But here's, the, here's your rights and responsibilities. And if you're going to own this object, you have to understand that, that you know, games are fun and hobbies and recreation are fun. But at the end of the day, that object is part of your birthright as an American citizen. It's not just a toy to play on the weekends with. And when we see people uh, that, that don't, you know, it, well, you, you've seen it, the, this, this nonsense of these people taking their grinders and cutting ARs up and so on and so forth. And, you know, a lot of that is, 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 is nonsense. But the truth of the matter is, you know, if every American gun owner believed that it was his birthright to own a gun, believed that the Constitution means what it says, believed that the Bill of Rights is sacred and not to be tampered with, and that it actually limits the power and scope and authority of the government, not of the people. If everyone who owned a gun had that belief, Joe Biden couldn't show his face in public. Nancy Pelosi couldn't show her face in public. So that's, I, I believe, where we as an, an industry have, have we've, we've messed up. We haven't, we've done a great job selling people stuff. But we need to, you right. know, help them understand that this, this isn't just a thing to play with on the weekends. This is a birth, this is part of your birthright. This is part of liberty. And, you know, and if you don't secure that jealously, it's going to be lost. Uh, I, I don't know, maybe I'm. Full, I'm, full of crap, well, right? no, I, I, I think you're right. Um, so here's something really interesting, and it's how you look at demographic shifts, where people live. And we see it uh, out here in ag country. You see people leaving the farm, going to the cities. And after you know the first generation that does that, they still appreciate where food comes from and how difficult their parents work. The, the, the grand children of that generation that was on the farm, they start to not truly understand the nature of what it takes for food. It's the same transition. About 15 years ago, the majority of people lived in or near city centers. So the population moved to be an urban population, not not necessarily split 50-50. So you saw a demographic shift to the cities and the things that cities provided. And those were conveniences. Those were, I would say, security. We outsourced the local police because that's what the rules said. And we're a country of, of law and order, mostly. Uh, I think all always are. And I think mm-hmm. the vast majority of people are. Yeah, but as as we have seen some disruption in those that infrastructure that protected us and served us as a culture that lives in the cities, vast majority of people now. Though that group of individuals are saying, wait a second, I now see the reason why we have a Second Amendment. It's not because the government's going to come rolling through and take us over. It comes down to the street corner. I have a right to protect myself, and I'm just realizing that this fabric of safety that we live in is, is not as secure as it was 12 months ago. Mm-hmm. And we've got all, defund police. That was a minority wagging the majority of that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's some re, you know, reform that might be needed, but take away security. The communities that people are saying they represent, vast majority say, wait a second, we want we want the law we want law and order to lean into where we are. We don't want them to pull away. Just lean in properly, re- lean in a little bit more um, locally, I should say. So there's. There's, uh, I, I think this idea of, of where we have been, you're spot on, where we're heading, I think there's an awareness. And it's, it's unfortunately, it takes an ugly awakening to uh, become aware. So I guess if we want to adopt a, a thing, um, maybe these uh, urban liberals are finally becoming woke, fully awake, awake <laughs> something, something we've been... Uh, We've been doing for quite some time, trying to trying to shake them a little bit and say, "Be careful what you're doing." Yeah, uh, one can only hope, my brother. One can only hope, and, and th- see that is yeah. the great trepidation that I feel in my stomach today. Are there enough Americans who finally, you know, I have to. I mean, I 
with the with the route the, the the rallies and the amount of people and even with the with the media downplaying it even with them essentially hiding hiding the fact and ignoring and pretending you you just cannot get around that millions upon millions of Americans are are well they're 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 supporting the president and they do not want socialism they do not want this nonsense and yeah. I, I just I just hope there are enough to to combat all of the fraud that has gone on, gone on for the last several months. Oh, and yeah, you know it, it, it. This it's it's like, you know, like you you and I we we watch we pay attention and I feel like I'm screaming at the mountains. You know when when you see things like the you know Judicial Watch reported that 353 counties in the United States of America have more red people registered to vote than they have eligible voters. Right. That should be the number one story on every news agency, and they've just ignored it. Right. And, right. And, and I'm I'm all for I'm all for hey this needs to be a fair legitimate uh, race. Um, there's so much noise. I'm frankly I'm, I'm frankly fatigued from it all. Mm-hmm. Uh, just uh, well, here in Iowa, the next presidential race starts in 24 months. Whoever wins, we're going to start seeing them in 24 months. It's it's a, a brutal cycle here. We see them all uh, face to face, so we we don't have much of a break uh, on the political front. But I can tell you right now, I'm I'm tired of getting the phone calls. It's kind of funny. I I thought you were a robocall when you called me today. <laughs> like, oh my god! Oh my god! We got, here we go. No, but I am no. just tired. I want uh, we're all. I think we're all hoping for the uh, the results to come out. I can tell you, it's, gonna, it's either going to be a blowout or really tight. I'm not going to predict who gets blown out mm-hmm. because it could be either way. I, I'm so I don't say confused, but there's so many different signals coming at us. It's hard to it's hard to interpret those. Oh, I, I no told solid ground. To, to yeah. Pivot. I told my audience, I'm like, look, go vote and then stay off of social media, stay off your phone, stay off the news. You know, right. is CNN. You know, at eight thirty a.m., we'll get you know say the the results are in. Biden is the winner. Uh, <laughs> I mean, they, they recorded that two days ago. Right? Yeah, they recorded. Well, they lied for Hillary. Remember, they gave Hillary a ninety percent chance of winning, and you you, yep. you can go all the way back to Carter. Go all the way back to Carter. New York Times had Carter defeating Reagan forty-seven to thirty-five or something like that. You know, and and yeah. of course. And so, I mean, they have a history uh, of essentially creative lying or wishful thinking uh, for 40 years. And it's like, people just, just don't do it to yourself. I, as soon as we're done here, there, I'm going to go shoot. I'm going to go out to the, and, and yeah. got, <laughs> but there's a, uh, a blog right now, 538, five, F-I-V-E, they spell it all out, 538, 538, that now, um, Trump's chances of winning went from 10% chance to 25% chance. And that's as of uh, about uh, 2 o'clock central. Mm. So this uh, you know, game day can change all predictions. Oh, yeah. And it's, uh, I mean, who knows? Who knows what's really going to, I don't know. <laughs> it's going to be those things I'll wake up in the morning and see who won the Super Bowl, so to speak. So. Yeah, exactly, exactly. I yeah. guess they had a, a World Series here recently. <laughs> I heard that. I heard it. Was, somebody said something, and I'm like, what are you talking about? I'm like, oh, yeah, well, I guess I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's been a weird year. I'll be glad yeah. 2021 comes in. Oh, well, brother, I was looking forward to 2020 because 2019 was <laughs> crap for me, and I was like, hey, 2020 is going to be great. <laughs> what, did I, what did I know? But Pete Brownell yeah. – Man, thank you very much for spending some time with us. I, I know you guys are, like I said, you're 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 going hundred percent, hundred and twenty percent out there in Iowa, trying to do everything you can for people. Uh, but thank you very much for you know we're at, sure thing, you are going to be on uh, episode one thousand two. So we are we're celebrating our one thousand episode week here uh, of Student of the Gun Radio. That's great. And you guys have been with us since the very beginning, and and I truly appreciate that, and I know my audience does. So, Pete Bowernell, my friend, thank you very much, and uh, I'll give you the final word. 
Well, uh, thank you, Paul. Be safe, America, and let's uh, let's enjoy the freedoms that we're fighting for. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you once again for joining us for a public hour of Student of the Gun Radio. Uh, you want to do the uh, the Discord thing there, Jerry? Remind them what they can do if they want to get involved. Yeah, go join the Discord server. It's studentofthegun.com slash Discord. Totally free to join the server. There are parts that are only accessible to the grad program. So if you want access to those, you go to get SOTG and join the grad program. But if you don't, if you're not interested in that, that's totally fine. Just go to studentofthegun.com slash discord or open the show notes and click that link and you'll be in the discord server. You'll be able to interact with a bunch of great people. Yes, indeed. And some of those great people are on get SOTG.com get SOTG.com. Yeah. That it, those people are the grad program. Now you can take advantage of training courses and information and material and the the only way to get it is to be part of the group and you be part of the group right now. Jared has done a limited uh, special introductory offer. It's cost you a buck. And if you don't want to invest $1, then you're not really serious. And that's great. Um, RTFO. Uh, but if you want to invest $1 uh, to get started, do it, go to get So uh, there you go. And uh, remember your beginner wants a student for life. We appreciate your reviews. If you haven't left a review or updated yours recently, head on over to Facebook, iTunes, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, or your favorite podcast player to voice your opinion. Don't forget to join us at the Student Lounge, a place for like-minded individuals to learn, connect, and support each other. No chicanery will be tolerated. Remember to check studentofthegun.com daily for new free content and giveaways. Watch, listen, read, shop, and connect at studentofthegun.com. Are you a social butterfly? Connect with us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter for new content each and every day at Student of the Gun. Watch Student of the Gun TV and videos from our trusted partners on Roku, Apple TV, Amazon Fire TV, Chromecast, and even AirPlay. Go to studentofthegun.com for direct links. And remember, you're a beginner once, a student for life. And there we go. I can hear you.